I just Kurt Heidel right now. Oh, no problem. You, no problem. Just, just trying to help you out. Thank you, John. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, we are live. Good evening, and welcome to the Pottstown School District regular board agendas for February 15th, 2024. I'm stepping in tonight in place of Ms. Bearden, who has a family emergency. So let's go right to the roll call. Armado? Here. Bearden? Heidel? Here. Hillen? Here. Kansianic? Here. Johnson? Klein? Here. Lawrence? Spence? Present. Six present, three absent. We have a quorum. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank Mrs. Oakley, do you want to go over the minutes? Uh, yes, I would like to present the minutes from the December 21st, 2023 board meeting and the January 11th, 2024 board workshop with limited action item. Thank you. And the list of bills? Uh, yes, Madam President, I would like to present the, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I would like to present the list of bills paid from the various funds for the period of December 2023 and January 2024 as presented. Thank you. Are you going to be doing the treasurer's report? Um, yes, I would also like to present the list or the treasurer's report from December 2023 and January 2024 as presented. Thank you. Committee reports. <clears throat> First committee is always policy personnel. Uh, that's me. We met February 1st. Uh, we discussed policy 707, the use of school facilities. We're going to continue that discussion in our March meeting. Uh, we talked about a new position for in personnel that we also are going to continue the discussion at our March meeting. Uh, a couple of informational items we went over, uh, a draft of report card statistics that, that they compiled, we compiled. Uh, talked a little bit about Teacher Next Door, the National Home Buying Program, and some school code changes. Our next meeting is going to be March 7. And is anybody going to give Mrs. Lawrence report? Um, I don't know if we have something to report yeah, we'll on. That. Um, if you could, that would be great. We can think of it. Uh, after that meeting, the curriculum committee met, uh, Mrs. Lawrence's committee. They went through a technology update with Mr. Lentz, our director of te technology, talked about VOIP phones, uh, cybersecurity updates, the breakages with Chromebook, Chromebook, power school implementation, uh, IT maintenance, and copiers and printers. They also talked a little bit about the uh, <clears throat> curriculum and educational programs update with Mr. Oxenford, our director of curriculum. And he mentioned five different programs there. Their next meeting will also be March 7th. Um, Mr. Johnson's report. You want me to do that one too? All right, we'll be to Mr. Hilton. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hilton, I skipped you. The, That's okay. <laughs> the Facilities and Finance Committee, Mr. Hill. All right, thank you. Uh, Irvine and Company gave a overview of the uh, audit they just did for the year ending June 30th, 2023. We were all uh, given a, uh, a, a PowerPoint of the major points, and uh, the final audit uh, will be posted on the district's website. Uh, Ms. Oakley uh, talked about the middle school playground. She's looking for approval to do a proposal for uh, the close to $210,000 for play equipment and flooring area at, at the middle school. 
the tree vitalize grant in uh, consultation with uh, Mrs. Oakley and Mr. Uh, Rodriguez were uh, asking to table that for another month because there's further evaluation needs to be done of the proposals we have. Uh, Ms. Oakley uh, introduced the new supervisor of bonus and grounds, Dan Willauer, who has started in January. He came from the Chester County Inter Intermediate Center. Uh, Mr. Willauer talked about an opportunity to put in LED lights at a very low cost, subsidized by PICO, and he's researching that and will provide an update to the board. Uh, he also provided some updates of facilities. Uh, the middle school fire alarm panel was replaced. Edgewood Central Storage Heating Unit has been restored. Rupert Water Pressure Pump and Controller has been replaced. High school section of the driveway at the student pickup area was dug up and replaced. And the North End Early Learning Center, an interior wall that was created and built to was created and built to make additional meeting space. And he thanked the uh, buildings and grounds crew for their hard work. And then uh, Mrs. Oakley, see, you are Mrs. Oakley. I never know it's anywhere to say there. Mrs. Oakley uh, showed us a number of contracts that will be approving, hopefully tonight, and a resolution for the real estate tax exoneration. Uh, for 23 to 23 year uh, tax year so that our uh, Kortnoff and associates can do the collections from here on in. And we need an Act 57 waiver for fees and penalties for every, any properties that have been acquired in the last 12 months if they can prove proof that they didn't receive a copy of their tax bill. And that's it. Thank you very much. After Mr. Hilton's meeting was Mrs. Johnson's Public Relations and Community Engagement Committee meeting. Um, she shared some of the updates the first week from Black History Month. It was in a very interesting and entertaining presentation. And then we had another good presentation by Mr. Armato and Mr. Rodriguez on the analytics of our social media uh, re our reach, how many people were reaching through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, X, and just the website. They then spoke about Governor Shapiro's budget proposal. Uh, if it comes to fruition the way he presented it, I believe she said that'd be an extra $4 million for yes. us next year, which call your local representative and make sure we get that extra $4 million. Uh, their next meeting will be March 14th. We then have uh, Montgomery County for Mrs. Johnson, do we have anything on that? Uh, so MCIU is Mrs. Lawrence, and we don't have anything from Mrs. Lawrence, uh, but we have the PSBA rep, Mrs. Kansianic. Yes. Um, Advocacy Day is April 8th. Um, you can register for that on the PSBA portal. Um, sometimes groups will also go down, so there might be more information coming about that. Um, there is a school safety summit on March 19th. The state of education report came out. Um, I haven't read it all, but a, a bullet point that I saw that I thought was interesting was 90% uh, of school districts report a shortage of substitutes and special education staff. Um, PSBA is offering an opportunity for board members to receive a cyber risk oversight for public education certificate. The first 200 licenses um, will be covered by the PSBA trust and that's valued at 3,500. Um, the PSBA trust also has student leadership scholarships. Um, seniors can apply to it. I think it covers 2,500 to 5,000. And um, just a reminder to complete your required um, school board trainings. That's it, thank you. Thank you. And personally now, the highlight of the committee reports is the student board representative reports. And tonight we have Imani and Elizabeth with us. So Imani, I think we're going to be first. Yes. So due to the effects of the snow, the new snow first started on the 17th of January and the transition went smoothly. Um, our keystones and finals went from the 3rd to the 12th of January and it was seamlessly the boys' basketball team had a big one against Nuremberg at our Martin Luther King Showcase, which is at the high school. 
uh, donations went to the Salvation Army in Pottstown. The wrestling team had their ninth border battle against Potts Group. Um, new sports teams such as Bowling Girls Wrestling have been smooth sailing. The Winter Spirit Week went from the 29th to the 1st with a pep rally, recognizing seniors and winter activities on the last day. The senior class is working on a trip to New York City on April 12th. Um, and then for February, students who made growth from August to January on exact path were given ice cream at lunch. There was a big hit for the students. On my quarterly pride ticket winners went on their shoe shopping trip as a reward for demonstrating excellence. Our Instagram account is posting daily videos of our students answering the question, who is a black person, past or present, famous or not, who inspires you to be great? Our boys basketball team continues in the playoffs and we're hoping to see more wins. The cheerleaders stir the show every game and we hope everyone can come support. We're anticipating excellent musical for the Beauty and the Beast and production will feature a short cameo appearance from Dr. D as well. <laughs> and then for our middle school, the winter sports have started and that that's including basketball, wrestling, cheer, and indoor track. And now I'm gonna speak for the elementary. In January, Barth had their Cub Scouts and the YW Club Club in Franklin, the family fun night was rescheduled to January 25th due to the weather, unfortunately. Um, in Lincoln, students from grades K to 4 took the winter Acadians median benchmark assessment. In February, um, in Barth, attended, they had an attendance challenge, and I believe it was like three ice cream parties. So um, the Quality Club, they also had the Quality Club, the Barth Brunch Waffle Bar. Um, in Rupert, from January 22nd to the 26th, as well as week, the January 29th marked the 100th day of school. January, January 31st was Rupert's Rockstar Assembly. February 7th was Ridiculous Nicholas Assembly. And in Franklin, they had a lot. So <laughs> January 19th was Franklin's Spirit Day, which was Popcorn Day, which is one of your favorite movie shirts. January 25th, it was the rescheduled family Franklin Family Fun Night at 5.30 p.m. January 26th was the Franklin Spirit Day, which is your favorite food day, which where you that is when you wear your shirt with a favorite food on it. February 6th, that was the Friend of Pot Friend of Franklin PTA at 3:30 in the library. On the on the 8th, they had the conferences in the PM. February 12th to the 16th was Spirit Week. February 13th was a, val was a Valentine Bingo in PM. And in Lincoln, um, at the end of January, they had their end of the month reward. Um, on the 1st of February, they had their Black History D Month daily announcements made by the fourth graders and a calendar of activities was provided to the staff and fa faculty containing YouTube videos read aloud by Black females and male authors with various other materials. February 9th was School Spirit Day where they wear their favorite football jersey and accessories. That same day was also the Student of the Month luncheon for December and January students. February 14th, Valentine's Day was um, Wear red, white, or pink. And for all districts, the first FID day was on the 16th. I didn't get to say this because we didn't have a board meeting on January, so we have a lot to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the F, that was the first FID day on the 16th of January, and it went better than we expected. Um, the musical crew has been working really hard. They're staying late at night to make sure the performance is as perfect as always. We know that Pottstown's musical. We always, we're, I'm very proud that Pottstown have, we have a good musical crew. Um, the first show is going to be on March 1st, and I believe it's going to go on to the March 10th. So please look out for more information on that. And that concludes our lengthy report. <laughs> Thank you very much. Elizabeth. Thank you. Report of the superintendent, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, ladies and gentlemen of the board. On the agenda this evening for your review and your consideration are consent items numbers seven through 16. And you'll also notice as Mr. Hilton alluded, 
while we do have two items on the non-consent, we are not considering, nor are we ready for the second item, but it was already on the agenda, so we did not want to take it off, but we will not be considering that this evening. Um, and as always, we begin our review with personnel, and I'll ask Mr. Boyer to walk us through them. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, good evening, school board members. For 7.1, uh, resignations and terminations, we have one administrative, four professional, uh, two exempt, and six classified. 8.1 leaves, we have one administrative leave, three professional, and two exempt uh, leaves, and three classified. 9.1, change in position and salary. Uh, we have five of those. 10.1 elections. We have seven uh, professional elections and seven classified elections. And you will also see in the file attachment for the musical production team, uh, which would include 12 people and the associated stipends. <coughs> Uh, 10.2 co-curricular updates. Uh, we have uh, one added assignment. We'll see, and then there's two updated assignments that are below. 11.1 professional leaves. You'll see in the file attachment, uh, there's 12 professional leaves recommended for approval. And 12.1 field trips in the file attachment, you will see two recommended uh, for your approval. And I'll go to Mr. Doakley. Thank you, Mr. Boyer. Uh, good evening, board members. Tonight for your consideration, we have six special education contracts. We have the annual approval of our financial audit uh, for 22-23, and that includes a general fund assignment uh, for capital projects of $2 million. Uh, real estate tax exoneration for the 2023 taxes in the amount of $1,137,945 will be turned over to the county and Portnoff for delinquent tax collection, as well as Act 57 waiver of additional charges to real estate taxes. Uh, this is a resolution which allows for new, newly acquired properties to request penalties and interest be removed from their first tax bill if they happen to not receive that tax bill. Uh, and Mr. Vice President, that concludes the consent items this evening. Thank you very much, Mrs. Oakley. Do we have any hearings from the patrons at this point? I'm actually first on the list, so I'll just jump off to the Again, your name and your street address. I'm just going to do it on my own this time. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Doug Slick, Mr. 474. Has that drill, drilled it through I the know, head. I got in there. Doug Slick, 474 North Ep. Um, I just have two brief points to make. Uh, to piggyback on your comment, Mr. Vice President, um, the uh, budget uh, came out of uh, Josh Shapiro's office, was very promising. Our senator sits on the Senate Appropriations Committee, where that bill is. You know. <clears throat> so she has some say in this. So I uh, spoke with the borough council meeting earlier in the week. We should all call her office and we should tell everybody we know to call her office because even if four or five people call an office of that size, she hears about it. So she gets 25 calls a year, it's gonna make an impact. And the, my, as a reminder for yeah. everyone, instead of she, are gonna give us her name? Uh, Senator Tracy Pennington. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, my other point is uh, I read the, um, the school board, uh, PA school board association letter. Yes, I'm that geeky. Um, and I'm very concerned uh, that um, I think it was close to 80% of the superintendents in the state uh, have said that um, students' mental health is the top concern uh, for their district. And somewhere near, they're reporting somewhere near an average of 66% of their student body, they believe has some sort of mental health challenge. And uh, I was just very concerned by that. I had no idea that it was a that, um, that kind of number. So I don't expect any feedback, but I'm just saying, you know, as a member of the community, I find that very concerning and I would uh, hope that we can help any way possible. Thank you for your time. Y'all do a great Thank job. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Mr. Santiago. Oh, we have one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Madeline. Hello. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to talk about name and address. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Madeline Heidel. I live at 954 Queen Street. I wanted to talk about the issues with busing. Um, I know we've had a lot of issues beforehand with like the spending money on the buses, but my issue here is overcrowding. There, it's there, I know there's issues with um, limited drivers, and I know that we're just in general struggling to we have a contract. It's probably difficult to deal with, um, but it's become an issue. I've noticed that there is just no room on the bus. Um, I believe busing has been merged for the middle school and high school, and I think there are two buses, not including those for uh, students with disabilities. I believe that's 81 and 83. I only have experience with 81 because that's the bus that I take. I'm not sure if the same, things are the same with 83, but I believe that it likely is. Um, there are a lot of crowding issues. I've experienced them firsthand. Often when I get onto the bus, um, there's just no seats left. People are sitting in the aisle. They have to ha make it three to a seat, which is almost an impossible task. Um, I have had to do that personally many times. I just am basically squatting in the aisle. There's no room left on the seats, but there isn't anything they can really do about it. The bus driver, the bus drivers, as well as the principal, I've had him come on the bus to talk multiple times. They have to encourage this because there's just there's nothing they can really do. So they are telling people to sit through the seat. It's an issue. There, I'm. I am. I believe it's going to be very soon. Someone gets injured from the, how what we have to do. We have to sit through the suit, of course. Um, on top of that, we since we are merged with the middle schoolers, there was barely enough room when it was just high schoolers. But with middle schoolers, it gets a lot. It gets not. <laughs> it gets worse. Um, a lot of the middle schoolers, not a lot, but some of them, mostly the younger boys, do not know how to behave on the bus. And I know that we have we've, we've um we have different protocol where it's we have these IDs and the forms filled out. But a lot of the young boys, it's not like they can do much because these young boys are sitting improperly. They're sitting in ways that are not safe. They're yelling on the bus. They're just generally being obnoxious. <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but they're young boys. I'm sure it's what they're going to do. But it's becoming an issue as well when you when you um when you merge this with the issue with overcrowding, it just becomes a general nuisance. It is not something that we can deal with. I think that we need to figure out something to do that will eliminate this issue of overcrowding because I think it'll be, if someone is going to get injured, someone is going to fall on the bus and try to sue the school, school district or at least the busing company because it's just not safe. I've checked laws. I don't think there's a law against how many students you can fit into a bus, which is an issue, but I still think something, something's going to happen. It's, it's just not safe. That's most of my concerns. I don't think I've missed anything I wanted to address. So thank you very much for sharing your concerns. <laughs> thank you. Very well stated. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Santiago, do we have any comments um, from anyone in the waiting room? Not at this time, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you. We then need a board action on the minutes, the list of bills. And the treasurer's report. Go I move that they be approved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hilton, and then Mr. Heidel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. And then a board action for all the consent items we've just gone through. Uh, motion and a second. So moved. Second. Mr. Heidel and Mr. Hilton. Thank you very much. And then a roll call vote, please. Can, uh, I, can I have a discussion first? Sure, I didn't see your hand. I'm sorry. No, I just put it up. Um, I have a question about the uh, real estate tax exoneration. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm sorry, the one, is the exoneration the one where, no, the waiver, mm -hmm. is that it? Where we're um, eliminating the- uh, Penalties and interest? Right. And yeah, that's the Act 57 waiver. Okay, so because the school district didn't send the bill out or because the- No, so there's actually specific language in there um, that you would have to prove that um, you didn't receive a copy due to the transaction of the real estate. So it would be within the first year of acquiring the property. And if there was something where the bill went to the original property owner and it was then transferred and you did not get a copy of that bill, uh, it allows us the ability to waive the penalties and the interest only, not the tax bill itself. So this was a new resolution that passed in 2022, Act 57 was a new, you know, it was a proposal in 2022 and legislation passed it and we're required to annually pass the resolution. Okay. All right. Got it. Um, and the other question was, um, I'm sorry, I'm used to like touch screen. Um, the other one was, it was a, a leave, professional leave, Mr. Boyer. And it seems like it happened in the past. Is that correct or is that a mistake? And which one are you referring to? Okay, one second. Bear with me. Uh, is it this one or this one? Okay. Field trips? I think it's field trips. No. Uh, professional leader is number eight. Number, number eight or number 11? Professional leave, yeah. It number seemed, 11. Um, to, uh, February the 8th to the 9th, uh, workforce development. Is that correct date or is that incorrect? That's correct. And I think we talked about that one. Yeah, that we fair. gave a um, notice that that was going to be on for February. Yes. That was, I mean, we had, I believe we had talked about it would be on this agenda. Mm -hmm. At the board meeting, at the workshop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. So I'm not going to approve something that already happened. Why do we have to approve these again? Uh, it's acknowledgement for the insurance mm -hmm. because we carry insurance that covers our administrators and students for 24 hours if they are to take a leave. So we like to have record of every trip that's ever been taken if we ever needed to go back and reference it. So can I just vote no against this one? Do I have to make it non-consent, I believe, correct? Yes, sure. Correct. Um, would yeah, it be exactly. appropriate to consent, right? Would it be appropriate to remove all of number 11 to just put that whole thing in non-consent? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it <clears throat> Mrs. Spence, is that okay if we just put the whole agenda item in non-consent? I mean, well, I, I like everything else. It's just okay. that one. All right. But if that makes it easier for you, then yeah. Well, if you pull the whole thing, it gives Mrs. Spence then only has the opportunity to vote no as it relates to everything, even under non-consent. So it wouldn't make a difference whether we kept it in consent or non-consent. I think you just pull the one item. But the one item meaning HST Baller, Baller Pacta Work Conference, that right. one? Yes. Okay, correct. All right. Um, that way that way, Mrs. Spence can vote in support of the other, the other items. The others. Mr. Dopey, you got that mm -hmm. one? Okay. Do, do we need a new motion then, Mr. Kalis? Because we're changing what we're really on. We would need yes. We would need to, we would need to amend the existing motion, um, noting that uh, that item has been moved to non consent. So the new motion would be to approve items six through sixteen, with the exception of item eleven. And, well, uh, with the exception of item uh, eleven, the first, first the line. first line of item yeah. eleven, correct. So essentially, all of um, consent minus the uh, pact of work. Uh, workforce development symposium. And, and I believe that was your item, Mr. Heidel. Well moved. Second. Any any other questions? Roll call vote then, please. Wait, what are we voting on? 
We're going on all the consent items. Okay. Mine, Sorry. <laughs> HF. Right. Everything except that top line. Except Got it. Right. Title? Yes. Hilton? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hansianic? Aye. Klein? Aye. Spence? Yes. Armado? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. Motion carried. Okay. <clears throat> so that moves us to item number 20, the middle school house model playground proposal. Is Wait, over? Mm -hmm. I'm confused. So you're going to come back to that yes. as a non-consent? Right. Right. Yes. Okay. I thought Correct. the vote okay. was on the motion. No. No. No, so the vote was on all the consent the was the vote, the vote was on passing all the consent items minus they amended the motion. They, they, okay. they, they, amended, okay. they amended the motion. They both yeah. said, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Second. Okay. So that okay. amended the motion. Got and then we voted on everything except. I am new here, apparently. Okay. So we'll come back to the yeah. question. Yeah, I think it's a conspiracy just to run, to run the new guy through the face. <laughs> <laughs> So the next, the first item that I have for uh, non-consent for your consideration board members is the middle school playground proposal that we discussed at the facilities meeting last week. So originally there were a few questions regarding the surfacing of the flooring and potentially an option for a different surfacing for the flooring. So I would like to report that first the additional option, which is a poured in play surface, which is a spongy surface, which is the surfacing that we used at the North End Learning Center, is not a viable option and it would not be proposed for this application because of the amount of running that is done in that area and the surface. That is not an ideal surfacing for kids to be running on. It's really an ideal surfacing for the play equipment itself. So that brings us back to the option, which was the artificial turf flooring. And there was some questions and consideration regarding the rubber uh, granules that are actually inside the turf. So I reached out to the company who is um, proposing this turf flooring and they were reporting that the infill that is proposed in this flooring is actually uh, a sand infill. So it's not that granule of rubber that you would see in the athletic uh, turf fields. And the sand infill is much heavier. It stays to the backing of the turf. It withstands the washout and it doesn't float like rubber. Uh, the playground grass is designed for playground use, whereas a sports field type turf is designed for uh, sports use. The playground grass has more fiber. So there's a need for less infill. Uh, about two pounds of sand infill is used for a one square foot space, whereas in the rubber pelleting, it's about six pounds that would go into that um, turf that's designed for the sports. So for these reasons, I would like to recommend that the board move forward with this proposal, including the turf flooring, and the total proposal is $211,000. Um, and I'll pause for board discussion or questions on that item. Do we have a rough estimate on our TBD? Um, at this time, we don't. We are working to see. Originally, it was about sixty thousand dollars, but that did include the install, but no, none of the designs and the permitting fees. Yeah. So we are waiting to see what is required as far as permits um, with this project. Okay, so we could be looking at about a hundred grand extra. We could be. We grand. could be. Okay. Yes. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring these items for your consideration tonight is to get them on order, which will keep us to our timeline for install um, to keep the house model, you know, keep it so that we can do a summer 2024 install and have this ready for the kids in the fall. Well, thank you for the additional information. I think that, at least for me, answers a lot of questions that yeah, I had. No, thank you. So, I mean, my, I guess my question and comment and then it's always been that it seems like such a light amount of playground for such a large amount of money um and i mean it's a small space and we're spending so much money for like just little bit of pieces i i yeah i do understand um there is a significant significant amount of grading that's involved it is about seven thousand square feet 
of sp actual space. Um, so I, I mean, I understand that the concept is not, you know, it's not a huge area. Uh, it's only for the fifth grade, the fifth upper and sixth. fifth and sixth, the upper grade levels don't utilize that space. So let me ask, what did we spend on North End playground equipment? What was the total cost of that? I'm so sorry. So it's, yeah, we're going to fall maybe a little more than that, but I mean, it's not cheap. Playground equipment is not cheap. Any other comments or questions? Uh, but one last comment or question. Um, so this is fifth grade only. Oh, fifth so, and sixth. Fifth and sixth. What if at some point fifth and sixth is not in that school anymore? Then what happens to our investment of what, roughly 350000 We would have a lot of decisions to lead up to that point. I Fifth and sixth would have to go somewhere. And at this point, I the, there's, no there's pretty much right it. now they're yeah. solidified there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they need a place to play. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, item 21, we're going to amend the agenda as was previously noted by both Mr. Hilton and Mr. Rodriguez. We're going to strike number 21 and then, of course, also the, the board action on it, which is number 24. Um, May may I um, ask that we substitute the uh, work workforce conference in that spot? It will not it won't have anything to do with urban tree canopy enhancement, but um, or or should we be calling that a different number? We just we just have to no. make sure to yeah. When we amend the agenda, that will fall into that space. So um, the first non consent item we'll vote on is the playground, and the second is the PAC the no. conference. Sorry, that's a little confusing, but I just want to make sure yeah. we don't walk out of here and forget it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so before we vote, are there any hearings from the patrons on item 11, line one, or, or item 21? Not at this time, Mr. Klein. Thank you. So we'll go with uh, number 23, board action on the middle school house playground. Proposal. I need a uh, so move. So move, Mr. Heidel. A second. second. Mrs. Johnson, thank you. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Spence? Yes. Klein? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Kansianic? Aye. Hilton? Aye. Heidel? Yes. Armado? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent, motion carried. And then Whatever number you want to use for this one, we're now going to <laughs> vote on the item that was formally consent is now non-consent uh, from item 11, line one. Uh, yes, that is the PACFA workforce conference. Correct. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Mr. Heil. Second. Ms. Kansianic, thank you very much. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. <clears throat> Heidel? Yes. Hilton? Yes. Armado? Aye. Kansianic? Aye. Spence? No. Klein? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Six ayes, one nay, two absent, motion carried. Is there any unfinished business this evening? No? No. Old business? No. New business? That's me. Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> um, at our uh, community engagement committee meeting last week, we talked about a board resolution um, that would be in opposition to um, taxpayer money going to private schools. Um, I believe it's probably, yeah, okay, it's right here in the agenda. So that is a resolution um, that I worked on with some fellow board members in other counties who are interested in some collective advocacy around um, 
fighting off vouchers and knowing that they uh, are likely to have a pretty negative impact on public schools. And so the, the main idea there is that we should not be diverting taxpayer dollars to uh, private schools until public schools are fully funded. So I had brought that to the board for discussion during that committee or to the committee for discussion and um, asked, if we, we said in committee that we would uh, put it on the agenda going forward. So. Just bringing it up here. It's not coming up for a vote tonight. It's just coming up for us. Do we want to move forward with it? Somebody's drafting letter. I bet it's you or your colleagues. What do you say? So is someone drafting a letter for us to approve at some point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the resolution is in um is is drafted. Um, is it being drafted as in draft form or this is its final form? Well, it is. It could change. I mean, to me. But until it's passed, it's effectively a draft. A draft. Okay. Um, so it is, you know, there for if there's any discussion about it. Um, it generally focuses on the court case first, just to say, hey, look, the court recognized that we are not constitutionally funding schools. And then it speaks to the issue of vouchers specifically. And the reason that is such a hot topic right now is because um, there is continues to be a lot of movement in the state house to push forward uh, vouchers. And um, it is not in the governor's budget proposal proposal for this year, but he, in his budget address, acknowledged that that was unfinished business to him, and he wanted to see um, that happen. But he didn't actually fund it. So I think you know it's kind of like we'll see what happens, and this is an opportunity for public education advocates to say, no, <laughs> this is not a good idea at all. Um, so yeah, just bringing it up. If there's any questions or discussion here. Um, I, I think it's incumbent upon us as a board to continue to advocate for our students and our community. And this is uh, the voucher issue is just another one of the issues that we have to continue to have our voice heard. Because if we don't make our voice heard, then we are subject to whatever it comes our way. And to, to Mr. Slick's point, uh, I think it is incumbent upon us make sure that we make contact with our state representative and our state senator to let them know how we feel about all of these issues. And since vouchers is one of my favorite ones, because there is absolutely no logic whatsoever that I can determine that says that the way to make public education better, the way to live up to our constitutional responsibility as a commonwealth to support public education is to divert dollars to private and parochial schools that have absolutely no accountability to the taxpayers. And when we and when we start to talk about as we come into the budget season and in, in, in our district and all the other districts across the, the Commonwealth of people being concerned about their property taxes, vouchers is a good reason to be concerned because all vouchers does is take money away from public schools, away from projects and programs and supports that can be vital to our students and send them someplace else that quite honestly gets to choose who they want. And they do yeah. choose who they yeah. yeah. So, so I would say, you know, we could have a lot of discussion. Well, you know, you can pass a resolution and what's it really mean? What it really means to me is at the very least, you're going to hear, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or you don't like it, Mr. Whoever, Governor, Senator, whoever, this is how I feel. <coughs> so needless to say, I would be supporting <laughs> <laughs> this so you so you be in there. I think I'll be in there. I appreciate yeah. when you move off the fence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Depend, depends if I get what senators and representatives get, and that is lobbied by a lot of rich people that have a vested interest in why there should be vouchers and send their money to those people to influence their vote. Well, I want to try to influence their vote by letting them know that I won't vote for them if they vote for this. Hmm. Thank you. I'll try to make myself more clear. <laughs> it's, so, it's, so I'm on both sides of the argument. Um, I understand that we need our tax dollars to fund our public schools. 
Um, but I also understand that urban families, as our superintendent said last week, um, they're concerned about certain things inside of public schools. I, I've, I'm out there talking to families. I talked to a woman a few months ago and she was concerned about sending her daughter um, to public school and she's spending a lot of money to send her to private school and she's looking for some relief, um, wants to move, sell her home, she can't um, find anything in, uh, in another area that has a better school district. So I kind of felt her pain um, because um, like um, the young lady made her public comment about some students just having behavior problems um, it, it's, 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 and until that's addressed, and, and, and my proposal talks about that more, um, teachers, but anyway, um, so that is a concern, like urban families, quote unquote, they care about their students' academic success, mm -hmm. and they are concerned that, um, public school just, just doesn't do it for them, so they want some kind of relief. They don't understand that charter school, cyber school is not accountable, is not, um, they won't be a board meeting like this discussing issues, discussing budget and finances and taxes or anything like that. Um, so they don't see that side of it that we see. They just see that they're, um, they want their student to be safe in school and they want them to be successful. Like they do care about PSAAs, right? That is a concern. And when they do go on the websites and they see that, you know, our students can't read, write, and do math on grade level, yeah, they want a voucher to send their kids to private school. Will everybody get that voucher and will private schools accept them? No, of course not. Um, you know, it's not for everybody. Private schools can be selective. And I'm sorry, I thought I turned this off. And, uh, she, <laughs> like private schools can be selective. They can decide, okay, you get in, you don't. You get in, you don't. And of course, majority of the students that don't get in will be the ones that look like me. So I'm on both sides of it, but I am in favor of signing this. So Okay, so if, thank you. I just want to be clear. Is selective another word for discriminate? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Oh, yeah, when they I'm selective, <laughs> I'm discriminating. So why would I send my money to a school that intentionally discriminates against students because every family they don't understand that they they're not aware of that they're getting the message that a voucher is available you get relief and you can go send your child to a school that will quote unquote be extremely successful those numbers for a cyber school and charter schools they're not available at least i haven't found anything yeah. as far as the student success but in parents minds when you're on the street you're talking to parents they say, uh, I want to send my kid to a, a private school or a charter school, a cyber school, and if the state can pay for it, even the better, right? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Even the better. So, yeah. And I also think that on the other side of the argument, those that are pushing for voucher, and I think why the governor it, it agreed initially to give that voucher is because they, 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 uh, they are concerned about, you know, scores and achievement and stuff like that. So I think they um, they initially agreed to that because they felt like this would motivate public schools to do better. But how can you do better if you don't have the money? The resources. So you got like, you know, it's like this. And so, some people, some families only see that this is an alternative. Mm -hmm. The politicians see it as, yeah, we got to get votes because we're get, sending you a check. If, if the politicians were really sincerely concerned about the students and their development and their progress, then maybe this voucher system that they're talking about, maybe they ought to make it bigger so that that voucher is good to send your child to a different public school. Mm -hmm. One of the public school districts that, that you would say, hey, you know, their scores are great, blah, 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 blah. This, is, this would be a great school for my child. Why doesn't the governor and the legislator say, let's expand that to all public schools? 
So if you don't like the school you are in, you can pick whatever school you want to of the 500 schools in the in the public school system. So like vouchers, and you can go there. vouchers for public schools. Sure. Yeah. Why don't, but if, that's if, like, if, yeah, if they're, that's if they're that's really that's concerned that's about because it. urban family. Right. They don't want urban families in their school districts right. that are excelling. Right. Oh, but they'd be going to a public school. Public school has no choice. They have to take you. Well, not if yeah. they only have to take you if you're in your in your in. This, your, that's where the there. governor and the legislators get to do their magic. Mm -hmm. That's actually not true. I can send my kid to Pasco if I want to pay you the pay tuition. myself. You yeah. pay tuition. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's, that's yeah. the difference. Exactly. The difference is the state wants to pay me to go to Pasco. Right, right. But you can send your they, child to they, private school if you paid for it yourself. Right. Yeah. If they were really interested in that, but they're not getting any money to promote that. They're getting money to promote private and parochial schools because that's where the money is. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm <laughs> against this. But... <laughs> I, I don't want to belabor this myself, but. Don't, uh, doesn't a public school have the right to refuse? I mean, if some kid in Potsgrove wants to come here, yes, we, we can uh, say for, no. for for tuition purposes. Yes, we mm -hmm. can. If they live in in the district, they have a uh, a legal right to come to our schools. If they are outside, they have to essentially ask, and we have policy for that. Okay. Then the governor and the legislature can very I got gotcha. you. I just was curious what the rule is. Yeah. And just to get to kind of the heart of it, I, I, I think this is a good discussion. The part I had highlighted in green in the the um, resolution, I'm just going to read that part because I feel like it's the part that captures the, the message. Whereas any program that diverts public, public money away from public schools and into non-public schools would make the court-ordered mandate for the fair funding of public schools more diff difficult to achieve. Like in other words, we've got a, we've got a court case that said public schools are inequitably unfairly funded. The legislature and the governor need to fix it. Any program that's going to say, oh, but we're going to take state money and we're going to send it to the private schools. There's that doesn't that does not address the issue at play. And so I think to me that's that's kind of where the crux of the matter is. And I do I also have some pretty strong feelings about the, the discriminatory aspect of private schools don't have to and do not accept all the students. Mm -hmm. um, public schools are where the buck stops. Like mm -hmm. we are there to provide a quality education to every student. And we struggle with that in many ways because we do not have the funding we need. So to me, this just feels like it's our responsibility and you know, it's, it's like a legal and moral mandate. And so to see money potentially go away from us mm -hmm. to those who don't have that mandate, just really like, mm -hmm. that's where it gets me. Yeah, not to extend the conversation, <laughs> but, but quite honestly, I think it's good that we have this conversation with, with our elected officials. I think it's good that the community can hear this discussion. So it seems to me, and this may have changed, I don't know, but it seems to me the, the number of private schools, and I believe parochial schools, have in their contract, when you sign up to send your child there and you pay your tuition, they tell you right up front, if little Freddie or little Susie does something bad and we have to expel them, you don't get your money back. So does that mean that I sent my public money there to support somebody, they got X'd out for whatever reason, my money doesn't come back to me, it stays there. Uh, it just doesn't, there's nothing about that that makes me feel good on any level. Can I just add an odd side comment to this whole conversation? Sure. They also recruit athletes no. um, from public schools. Really? No. <laughs> That is absolutely a shock. <laughs> but I, well, I didn't know that until like two years ago. Well, I probably around the time I came on the board. Uh, I, that was a shock to yeah. me. I was like, well, that makes sense. I mean, it's yeah. awful, but yeah. I, I mean, it's good for the athlete that they get to whatever. But um, yeah. Any other thoughts or comments? 
Linda, you, you're wondering why. Sorry. You're wondering why in the last uh, state <laughs> championship basketball, boys basketball and girls basketball, the of the top six teams, five of them came from private or, or parochial schools. Right. You're wondering why? I don't know. They just all. <laughs> okay. Very good discussion. Thank you for that. And it is and it's a very important topic, absolutely. All right. So we are on to information. Is that where we are? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so who that's you, Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Uh ladies and gentlemen, uh just a reminder as our student board reps are referred to, we have our high school musical. So we uh, invite you to, there are multiple shows, so you can go on the website and see all that, and it's also attached uh, for your convenience on the board agenda. This is over. Uh, yes, the monthly meeting notice from March is attached. Thank you very much. Federation remarks, Ms. Hospitor. Mm -hmm. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you see, I do have a friend with me tonight. I had to do some um, videotaping with Anthony. Uh, this is Junior. Um, he is my therapy dog. Um, he goes to Franklin. Um, and because of board policy, which is awesome, um, he is allowed to do that. And, and he has benefited the Franklin uh, community just so much. Um, I have kids and staff stopping in the room all the time. And um, he's just been a really good, good uh, member of the staff. So um, he's with me tonight. Um, so Sarah and I take turns giving comments. And so we decided that we are going to highlight um, things that are going on. So I'm going to do elementary. She's going to take middle and high school. So I thought I would start with um, some awesome things that have been going on for Black History Month in all the buildings. Um, so at Franklin, um, of course, I started there because that's where I, where I live. <laughs> um, we had Mrs. Mason uh, who had outside her door a uh, Black History Month display um, so people could learn more about important historical figures with disabilities. Um, so she is a teacher of our um, autistic support class. Uh, Miss Fuse, our music teacher, I loved her title. I actually had to text her to see what the title was because it was so awesome. The Amazing History of African American Music, and she had the coolest posters out. At Rupert, um, they have so many cool bulletin boards, um, and I was taking a look at one, and they had some quotes on there. Um, Write like Maya. Play like Serena, shoot for the stars like May, lead like Harriet, invent like George. Great messages just to see daily. Um, thought it was cool. Lincoln had Mrs. Schwartz's class, second grade class. They were busy researching Harriet Tubman. The pre-K class had crafts uh, celebrating uh, May Jameson and George Crumb, the inventor of the potato chip. They have really cool. Uh, little potato chips coming out of bags. So cool. Barks, um, if you have not seen it yet, the video about uh, Sing About Martin, so cute, so cute. Um, and the fourth grade there did some um, research and writing biographies of historical African-American figures. This was just a few things that I found as I was going through. Um, a sample of all the wonderful things that everyone is doing in the district for Black History. I did have to mention uh, the Potsdam High School and the Instagram videos. So cool. I was listening to them. Um, really good. If you haven't seen them, check them out. Um, I'm going to brag a little bit about first grade. Um, so we just got done taking our middle of the year assessments. Um, and one of our big ones is a cadence reading. So it's been a struggle. And Mr. Rodriguez will tell you, I think we've sat in this room many times talking about this test. So in the beginning of the year, the kids uh, take a look and identify letters. They're segmenting sounds in a word and they're reading nonsense words. We get their scores, make groups, great. 
Middle of the year comes and they have to do the nonsense words and then they have to read three passages. And historically, when we get to the middle of the year, first grade scores go down because of the change in testing. But this year, district-wide first grade, our scores went up. The dip did not happen this year. Why? Well, that was the change. Well, these kids in first grade had foundations in kindergarten the whole year. Was that a factor? Well, I hope it was. Uh, I really do. Um, and this is something that we have to continue to watch. I mean, we also have our great apps like Lexia and teachers using data from that and the LinkedIn uh, tests that we have. Um, it was just so nice to celebrate that growth when it came time. February 2nd, we had data review. And I have to say at the buildings, the building coaches did a great job pulling out the LinkedIn data for uh, teachers to look at. Um, and I personally like, like the positive part, like here in math and reading, here is where growth was seen. The coaches working with us, just a positive experience. And my last statement is, um, if there's anyone out there listening, um, you really need reading intervention specialist assistance. That's the one thing where we're lacking and especially at Lincoln and Franklin, and they are really, you know, vital to the success of our kids in reading. So if there's anyone out there, if you know anyone that might be interested, um, we would love for you to apply and have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Round table. Ms. Canciano. I didn't even do that. <laughs> well, then you're ready if you knew it was coming. You know? No, I wasn't. I looked in, I looked away. Did you see the eye contact? Um, <laughs> I, I I will just say, um, uh, come out and support the musical. It, I've um, seen some sneak peeks. It looks great. Um, I'm definitely biased, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I don't think I have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Amato? Okay, well, since three different people have already mentioned the musicals, I think that's off my list. <laughs> uh, but it, in... Uh, in uh, light of what some of the things we talked about as uh, board objectives for the coming year and talking about things that we are proud about. And, and certainly I'm very easy to want to talk about reasons why we're proud from Pottstown. Uh, the other day, Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Kansianik and myself attended the Tri-County Chamber of Commerce luncheon where another one of our board members, Mr. Hilton, received an award from PAID, uh, the Board of Directors Award, recognizing all of his efforts to uh, highlight the positive things going on in Pottstown with his advertorials that appear in the Mercury twice a, uh, a week. And I will add that he is a man who puts his money behind what he says because those ads do not appear there magically for nothing. They are paid for by Mr. Hilton out of his own pocket. So thank you very much. You give me a reason to say proud to be from Pottstown. Thank you. Could, could you lend me a little? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be a dorm interview? Did the dorm interview cover next to Pottstown? <laughs> Mrs. Johnson. Okay, I have two thoughts. One, I promised Mr. Armado I'd mention, he probably doesn't remember it now. He doesn't. That's nice. Okay, I could have skipped it. Oh, no, I'm worried. Um, no. So I, I just was observing the other week um, about one of the really positive impacts of the co-curriculars is how well-rounded it can help make our students. Um, I, I think a lot of times we'll see students who maybe in, in academics, it's more challenging. There's more struggle. But in maybe the play or in athletics or something, they find a spot that that fits in a way that gives them a sense of validation that they might sometimes struggle with in school. And at the same time, there might be kids who find school very easy, um, but find a opportunity to struggle in some of these other areas in a very positive way. Um, I think that struggle is a really important part of development uh, for all people, including children. Um, and I see sometimes with athletics that 
was, and, and certainly it should be true of other things as well. There's sometimes an opportunity for students to not be having the easiest time and actually need to take more time to figure stuff out or find themselves in a position where, you know, they're not top dog. And so I just was, was observing to him that that is just an area of, of real value. It's not just about how many top athletes do we have um, or how many, you know, whatever. I, I hope tons of people come out to the musical, but like how awesome the stars are, but how, so many students get a chance to play a part and get a chance to grow from wherever they're starting. So I just wanted to observe that. And yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to note, and I almost hesitate to mention this, but I'm going to anyway. Whenever we talk about vouchers, I think that it's, uh, I find myself in a very ironic situation because I went to a private school for my entire growing up years. I was homeschooled when I was younger. And then I went to a private Christian school. And I went there because my parents um, they valued the small environment and the religious values and education. Um, and then as a young adult, I actually taught at a small private Christian school. Um, and I thought vouchers were the best idea ever <laughs> because of course we need to, you know, bring money here because they're educating those students and those students aren't in public school. Um, and I was just thinking about what changed my mind. Um, what changed my mind was starting to understand that value of what public school gives to a community um, and the fact that they do serve all students, regardless of ability, regardless of family background, regardless of religious background. Um, and as I started to understand that more, and as I started to get more and more connected to the town where I lived um, and see how core it was to the community. I think that is what got me to the point of realizing um, that public schools aren't just an, another form of many kinds of schools. They are something that is so foundational, both to the community and to democracy and to just having a society where everybody, you know, gets that ability to be educated. And then I got, you know, pulled into the spare funding stuff <laughs> and it got, it got real crazy then. But, but I just sometimes look back and I'm like, good heavens, like I am in such a different spot than where I used to be. Um, and I can empathize with people who feel like, because my parents were not, were not rich. Like this, it was, it was a financial burden to send me to private school. So I really do empathize with that. Um, but then getting involved in public school and seeing some of the needs and seeing the struggle to meet them, I think just really gave me a different perspective. So I mean, I just want to share that because I, I think every time this topic comes up, I'm just struck by a little bit of, oh my gosh, who am I? But also, <laughs> also just how transformative it has been to actually understand the value of the unique value of public school and, and the real critical need that we fully fund it so that, um, and again, understanding that funding is not the only piece of what makes a school successful. And it's not the only piece of uh, what it takes to educate a child, but it's just so critical that we get that part right. Thank you. Mrs. Spence. Oh, I thought we were going around. <laughs> you thought wrong. Oh, <laughs> apparently. But here we go. I, I always type up my notes um, on what I'm going to speak about because um, I don't want to miss anything. So you don't want me to start second. doing that, Deb. That's mm. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. Okay. Uh, so uh, before I do make my comments, I'd like to give a rundown of the positive things I did in the community this month and last month, um, since that's the new standard. Uh, it's also a new standard that I do it in three minutes. So I try to speak fast. I think you went over. Laura, but um, anyway, I like to say um, uh, happy uh, Black History Month, but I also want to say happy birthday to my aunt, Trichy. She's the matriarch of my family and a, a longtime public servant of public schools as a secretary and then later a teacher. She got her master's degree later on in life and became a teacher in the same school that she was a secretary in. She turned 84 years old today. And um, I, I think that is um, awesome. She's my inspiration. 
Um, last month, I attended the borough meeting and created the Pottstown Commercial Corridor Association to address the small business owners' concerns. Um, we had our first meeting, 11, 11 dedicated souls attended, and they'll be out like an army to defend and protect small business owners in the borough. Um, however, my ability is limited to help with that um, because of a, a lot of situations in my life, life happens. But anyway, they will forge on and they'll meet again this month. I'm really proud of what is to come and what we created as a small community. Um, I also created the Wings of Victory Outreach.org um, new website and pet contest fundraiser. I hope that you would enter. Uh, you go to wingsofvictory.org and you can snap a pic of your wagon pets, join the fun, maybe win some snacks for your pet um, while helping a good cause. The uh, organization is to prevent homelessness so that people are not sleeping in the dirt. We prevent that before it happens. But lastly, I, I talked a little bit about this in the uh, discussion, discussion, but I am really deeply concerned about that recent comment made last week regarding the perceived lack of interest in academic success among urban families. I think uh, that statement is unfounded, it's harmful, and it's perpetrating a negative stereotype that undermines our community's efforts to support all of our students. And research consistently shows that academic success is crucial for long-term outcomes. Like everyone's not gonna go into the MBA or the NFL. Um, you know, society pays attention to your academic record. They, they look at that in order to get in college um, and um, to be successful in life. It is essential to recognize that families in urban areas, like all families, care deeply about their children's education and their future success. Barriers such as socioeconomic challenges and limited access to resources can impact academic performance, but this should not be mistaken for a lack of interest or effort. So I urge the school board, my fellow school board members, to address these comments stand against such divisive rhetoric. And, and as stewards of our children's education, the, the board's silence on this or inaction in the face of such statement will be looked upon like unkindly. Um, as a community, we must work together to support all students and families, providing the resources and opportunities needed to achieve academic success. So I call on the superintendent, my fellow school board members, to reaffirm your commitment to equity and inclusion in this Black History Month, ensuring that every student has the support they need to thrive academically and beyond. So I request, as I always do every month, um, that the equity and inclusion become embedded into the school board committee structure, and I'll continue to do so until it's done. So. Uh, Thank you very much. Oh, and I was awarded the Love Your Block grant to beautify my neighborhood. And I want to thank all the Pottstown Community Action folks. And I want to thank Ms. Kantianic for giving me a Black History t-shirt that says, I am Black History. So I'm going to wear it really proud. That's all my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilton. I don't have anything. Thank you. I'm going to do my best Price is Right impersonation right now. Uh, this evening, if you notice in front of us, there's something new from our entrepreneurship classes. It's a 3D printer. It's not only a name placard, it also is a water holder, a place for post-it notes, another place for good stuff, a secret compartment, <laughs> and each end has the Trojan 3D printed into it. So they're beautifully done, and please thank the entrepreneurship class for us. We'll do do these stay here, or are these our games? <laughs> great, great they replaced the paper. That That's what I thought, but I was going to walk, walk out with it. So, so if if you would like to take it, no, you may. No, no. Otherwise, if you keep them here, we will keep them here for you, and then at whatever time, you, you know, they're they're yours. So you know they're they're not going to stay with the school district if if and when you you uh, rotate off the board. They're they're yours to keep. How do I peel that off? Phoebe, <laughs> <laughs> we could probably peel that off if you don't want it. 
did they 3D print the emblem or this was yes. like okay. Very nice. What kind of 3D printer you have? Because mine right. is a squiggly. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's just so it's it, it comes up to my chin about. Oh wow. Above. That's awesome. Before we adjourn tonight, we're going to have an executive session for the purpose of personnel. After we do adjourn, we will not be coming back to a public session. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>